Chapter 39 And thus the journey ended. But the travellers lived on. Every one of them became rich and successful in the new country. The centipede was made vice president in charge of sales at a high class firm of boot and shoe manufacturers. The earthworm, with his lovely pink skin, was employed by a company that made women's face creams to speak commercials on TV. The silkworm and Miss Spider, after they had both been taught to make nylon thread instead of silk, set up a factory together and made ropes for tightrope walkers. The glowworm became the light inside the torch on the Statue of Liberty, and thus saved a grateful city from having to pay a huge electricity bill every year. The old green grasshopper became a member of the New York Symphony Orchestra, where his playing was greatly admired. The ladybird, who had been haunted all her life by the fear that her house was on fire and her children all gone, married the head of the fire department and lived happily ever after. As for the enormous peach stone, it was set up permanently in a place of honour in Central Park and became a famous monument. But it was not only a famous monument, it was also a famous house. And inside the famous house, there lived a famous person, James Henry Trotter himself. And all you had to do on any day of the week was to go and knock upon the door, and the door would always be open to you, and you would always be asked to come inside and see the famous room where James had first met his friends. And sometimes, if you were very lucky, you would find the old green grasshopper in there as well, resting peacefully in a chair before the fire. Or perhaps it would be the ladybird who dropped in for a cup of tea and a gossip, or the centipede to show off a new batch of particularly elegant boots that he'd just acquired. Every day of the week, hundreds and hundreds of children from far and near came pouring into the city to see the marvellous peach stone in the park. And James Henry Trotter, who once, if you remember, had been the saddest and loneliest little boy that you could find, now had all the friends and playmates in the world. And because so many of them were always begging him to tell and tell again the story of his adventures on the peach, he thought it would be nice if one day he sat down and wrote it as a book. So he did. And that is what you've just finished reading.